you know, Tua was a rookie. He was rehabbing the first year. Let's remember this. Now he can actually train with his wide receivers and he can train his body to be more defined. You know his accuracy is right there, so he's good. He's really good. So E on the mic, episode 13. I am your host E, aka Ethan. I am back with another brand new episode. As you can see, this is a di totally different environment I'm in. I'm in 4K. How did I get me a 4K? You can see the nice little bright light right here that I'm recording on today, solely today. I'm doing a solo episode. We're gonna be talking about my fins, how they finish off the season. Eesh. I don't want to talk about that, but I got to, I got to. And you know about my Miami Heat, they made the finals last year, but we're on a slow start, going three and four. So we're going to talk about the Heat and the NFL playoffs. Without further ado, I'm going to start this off. So here we go. Miami Dolphins, what a season. No one thought we would go 10 and six. Let's be realistic. I, I honestly thought we would go as high as nine and seven. We, we excelled that. And my expectation really was seven wins just because of how we played last season. It just showed that we are different. We are going to be the future of this team, especially the key players we got. In the beginning of the season, that's real. Everett was not connected. Cam Newton, Cam Newton beat us 22-12. to 12. And then you got Buff and Josh Allen coming to town. They beat us as well. By the time we started winning games, it was against Jacksonville. And then all of a sudden... We started looking very hot. We beat the 49ers. We beat the Rams. The Rams. With Tua's first start. Remind you of this. And Fitzpatrick, Fitzmagic was going on fire. There's no question about it. But you got to think about it. You think about Fitzmagic. The reason why I still kind of disagree about putting Fitzmagic in. Yes, Fitzmagic has saved our season against the Raiders. I can admit that. That if that wasn't happen, we would have lost that. We've been in the hunt. And we were a lot, we were been out of the playoffs. No questions about it. But you really think about it, it's since now Chan Gailey's gone, it look it looked very different. It's like when Fitzpatrick was on the field, Fitzpatrick can go all over the place, he can go throw to Timp up two, can throw to here, 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 but with Tua, they throw five yards, ten yards, maybe ten yards, maybe. Or it'd be a twenty plus one to the blue moon, but it just seems limited, and then you just try to run the ball when we don't have a good running game besides maybe Gaskin, but Gaskin is more of a third down type of type of player. No, no disrespect, but it's just how it is for Miami. Which we do need a new running back, no question about it. And then we don't have the wide receivers. Like for example, Parker got injured at one point, missed a few games, but he did came on week 17, which was the ugly loss, which I'll explain that more. And then we have Preston Williams been out since the Cardinals game. And then you had Greg that got injured since the Raiders game. So it didn't really help us. Not a lot. It definitely didn't help us a lot that we lost players like that. So then we had players like Mac Hollins in the game. Malcolm, Malcolm Perry, Lynn Bowden Jr. Now let me be clear about Lynn Bowden Jr. though. I do like the kid from Kentucky. I love him in a Wildcat. I wish, I wish we can keep him. I hope we, hopefully we can keep him. Lynn Bowden Jr. And Malcolm Perry, those are special good wildcat formations. Since you know how Miami makes some tricks, we got we have a nice few trick plays that if we had to, if it wasn't for a lineman to call that were eligible, it would have worked. Like for the fake field goal, again, of course it was called off. Yeah, it was against the Bengals, and then you got then you got a fake punt that Mac Hack Mac Hack made, but of course the lineman didn't. Call eligible, man. You know how much bad that is? I'm like, oh, man. Those are steals. Those are steals. I'm telling you. But overall, everybody was shocked that we even went 10-6. to 6. I think we were a year early, but 
Now, there were some games that I thought we should have won that probably cost us the playoffs. For example, the Denver game when Tua struggled, it, was, it wasn't Tua's day at all. And especially when Tua started saying that, oh, oh this, is, this might be easy, this could be a good one. Uh, against Denver, it didn't look too well. And let me let me tell you, like Denver, I thought Denver was going to be good this year. Unfortunately, they did not. But Drew Locke came in that game. After he threw that first interception, after that, lights out. Excuse me. But it was lights out completely. And we never looked the same. I think that's what really at what cost us. And then Patrick Mahomes' game, we played a good hell of a game there. I think we just came too short. You know, that's why I have problems with Chiefs trying to finish games without having a one position game. So that's going to be interesting in the playoffs for the Chiefs. But for Miami, those games as well, we got it close. We lost to the Bills and we lost to the Pats. So that's four games right there we already lost to. And then almost losing the Raiders on prime night. So, uh, but like I said, luckily if it's bad. Patrick came in and stayed behind. Seattle, we lost to Seattle, and it was a close. It wasn't too much of a close game, but we made the game a little bit more. But that would make it five losses right there. And then you had the a fortunate loss, which was fifty six to twenty six. That was a disgrace of a game, honestly. Just we never looked the same. Two or through three interceptions. Although he got one touchdown, that was garbage time, for real. But. We look horrible. That didn't look like the, the same team that I saw all year long. All year long, I saw a dominant defense and an offense that that needed help. You could tell they needed help. Although our defense will help us with the touchdown, which that's really how it was against Arizona and the Rams, if you kind of notice that part, and the Chargers too. But it, we just never looked. We just relied on our, our defense. And then when our defense needed our, the offense help, our offense wasn't there. So it was, you know, it was crazy. Like, it's like our defense can be there, but then our offense can't. And then when our defense can't be, our offense still doesn't be there. So I know Chan Gailey did resign, although he did win 10 to 6. And this is the first time we got 404 points on offense since 1986, fun fact. But, however, this will be a third offensive coordinator that, that – Coach Flores is going to have to find. So that's going to be very interesting going into the offseason, who we, who we can get. You can get the tight end coach that we have currently right now or get someone that's in the free agent or get another coach, that, let's say, from Green Bay, for example. They have experience there with Aaron Rodgers. So who knows? I think Tula, I don't think we should draft another quarterback. I think that would be stupid of us to do that. I think it's still Tua's time. It's his rookie year. He went 6-3. So... Six and three is not that bad, if you think about it, for a rookie. You know, I understand that he wasn't like Justin Herbert. Justin Herbert was phenomenal, no question about it. But, you know, two was a rookie. He was rehabbing the first year. Let's remember this. Now he can actually train with his wide receivers, and he can train his body to be more defined. You know, his accuracy is right there, so he's going to be really good next year. I am, I'm calling it. He's going to do good. I'm going to predict. I'm going to say good, plus 20 passing touchdowns with a few interceptions, and he's going to look good. He's going to look much better than how he played this year. That's what I'm predicting for Tua right now. This is early as heck. I might change my mind during the summer, but this is what I think about Tua right now. And then when I think about the draft, we got third overall and number 18 overall. Right now, this is my early draft selections. If I was number three, I would pick Devontae Smith. Devontae Smith, the Heisman Trophy winner. From Alabama, that man, although he is six foot, 175 pounds, that man has strength. I know he looks skinny, he looks scrawny, but that man has strength. He doesn't look phased in the cor corners, none of that. So I will pick Devontae Smith, and especially he has connection with Tua. He, Tua was the guy that passed in the game winner against Georgia, if you guys remember this, in the college football playoffs finale. So that would be a great connection, especially since we do need wide receivers in that depth. I loved Parker. I think he's going to be great, number one. Hopefully, Devontae Smith could be number two and could possibly overtake Parker in the near time future. But as of right now, I still love Parker, number one. But hopefully, we can get Devontae Smith to help out this Dolphins wide receiver core. And then running backs, I just feel either we can take a linebacker here 
or we get Naj Najahi Harris. Harris is a nice running back out of Alabama. I've seen people link Clemson. I've seen LSU. I just love Harris a lot. I think Harris can add us. He's kind of like familiar to Derrick Henry. So if we can get another, if we can get like a Derrick Henry type of running back and our offensive line can, can click, man, you have no idea how threatening Miami can get. You have no idea. Our defense looks solid. No questions about it. Obviously, we need a defensive line kind of pressure the quarterback a little bit more. A little bit. I think another D tackle will be nice for us, and another corner. Corners is Nick Meehan. They gave up three touchdowns to the same wide receiver in that game, so that didn't look good for Nick Meehan. So that's going to be what I think Miami Dolphins should look for in this offseason. I'm still bummer about <laughs> we didn't make the playoffs. The freaking Browns made the playoffs. I know Peyton. Oh my god, fan life sports is watching this. Congratulations, your Browns made it to the playoffs. Fun fact, the Browns last time the Browns made it to the playoffs, they had to play the Steelers at Heinz Field. And the, the Steelers beat the Browns by three points. 36 to 33. So that's gonna be very interesting going to that, but that will get in the depth of that later on in the show. But <laughs> by the way, Jared Gold Steelers, by the way. But in the end though, I think Miami I go look at the season. It was a winning season, no question about it. Unfortunately, we did not make the playoffs, but this is motivation for us to get to the next level next season, and hopefully we can build from this, from 10 to 6, and possibly take a division over the Buffalo Bills next year. Hopefully, we'll see. I got to see what Buffalo does in the playoffs and how they will do in the draft and the free agency, but we will see. Until then, that's what I got for Miami Dolphins. Heat, on the other hand... Woo, kind of sluggish a little bit. Three or four past few games. Oof. We did blow out Oklahoma City. That was a blowout. That was like a gimme win. That was a W right there. That got us back to 500. But however, we did play Boston Celtics today. We lost by two points, 107, 105. Man, that's a bummer, man, because I've been... I've been looking at it. We were really close during the game. We were up by two or five points. It wasn't that much, but we were still there in the game, but couldn't couldn't finish it. I think the one, number one problem that I always see, especially with the Heat in the finals and into the regular season, turnovers. Turnovers, turnovers, turnovers. We commit too many turnovers. Too many turnovers. That's the thing that I always notice about the freaking Heat every time. I'll be screaming this in the TV. Uh, I've been saying this to my other podcasters that didn't believe in my heat when we made it to the finals because they were going for Boston. <laughs> Legit, like they were going for Boston over my heat. So you got you to gotta respect me, you know? Like you got to respect the heat. I understand that they got KD's back and that's probably why the heat are down there. I know they criticize the heat a little bit because of the turnovers. I think if we can clean up the turnovers, I understand we have shooters, but we got to shoot some twos too, you know? There's, there's Gimme Buckets, you know? We got Jimmy Buckets, remember? We got Bam Bam. Top Hero. I know Hero is balling. Robinson. Man, if we can do... If we can make threes, that's great. I understand Avery Beal, to be exactly two. But if you can think about it, if we can make those twos at the same time, I know how many times you shoot for shooters, for threes. I understand that that gets you the wins. Kind of like how Steph Curry did with 62 points. But realistically, I think we can score more. If we can rebound, I think my, my team can get back to track. Because right now, the Hawks lead in the division as of right now. We are, we are in third, if I'm mistaken. Actually, no. The Magic is in the lead right now. And then the Hawks and then Miami. So that's going to be very interesting. I think Miami will come up with the upside pretty soon and hopefully by then by the next episode i record miami should be back in number two spot or the number one and in, in the southeast division but so so far still a slow start for miami i still gotta see legitimate i know we still play brooklyn Nets this month so we gotta see how that plays out for the miami heat three and four how do i feel about it just kind of average right now so Hopefully, Miami can step it up a little bit more. I know we did lost some shooters like Jay Crowder. lost the dunk contest, man. Derrick Jones Jr. for agency. So, 
we got to see how we play, you know. I know we lost a few two key players, but in the end, we got to step up to, my, to the game. Miami Vice Selections, the NFL Playoffs Edition. Here we go. Let's start with the first matchup. Buffalo Bills beating my Dolphins 56-26 versus the Colts sur surviving against Jacksonville. It was not it was a survival. It was just they won 28-14. That officially eliminated my team. Period. No questions about it. It was a good luck if my team ever got a win and had to play against the Bills, especially how they played. Eh. But this team, two te these two teams right here, are just gonna be a nice ones right here. Buffalo is going from the Colts at Buffalo. So, and this is the first time the Bills will have their fans this time. There are 6,000 people there. So I do expect the Buffalo win. However, it's gonna be a really close game. I think it's gonna be a close one game. And this might be Phil Rivers' last game in a uniform, I believe. So this is gonna be a close one. It's gonna be 30 to 27. It's gonna be a close one. Colts have been firing up a little bit as long as they could stay in the second half. I know the first half against the Steelers, they were there. They had the Steelers at their hand in high field, but they choked. So you just got to see. I just think the Buffalo still got this, and they're going to move on to the next round. And then the next matchup I got, Seattle versus the Rams. Now, this divisional rival, they're both one-on-one -on -one even in the series, you know, just comes out who comes up in that game it's going to be back in seattle where seattle did win that game against the rams it's going to come down to dk metcalf it's going to come down the running because both defense are great against each other against each other last time the, these two teams played against each other they held each other to six to three only the field goal was in the first half in the first half that was the same game that jared Goff got injured they're saying jared Goff may be back this Saturday, so who's who knows? Who knows what we will see for the Rams or Seattle? I know Seattle, you definitely see Russell Wilson, but I still got I still got to go with my my Russell Wilson, man. Seattle, Seattle is lighting it up. I think they're gonna, especially they're gonna be at home. I know there just not gonna be any fans that I that I that I know of, but I think Seattle still got in their divisional rival, the Rams. So this time it's not gonna be a close one. I think it's gonna be by. 13 points. This is going to be 27 to 14. I just don't. I see the. I see it's still a close game in the first half. Second half, I think this is where Seattle takes over. You kind of saw it against the 49ers. When they, they were trying to see if the Packers would lose. They had the first seat, but you can tell they came back and won the game. So I got Seattle. Now, the game that people have been really talking about, Washington versus Tampa. Now, now these are two teams. The NFC least divisional title, Washington seven and nine versus Tampa Bay Brady eleven and five. Now, who do I got here? Defensive team versus another defensive team. This is gonna be a tight. First off, this is gonna be a tight game. No question about it. both these teams. Pretty good. Their defense, Washington defense is good. Same thing as the Bucks. Don't worry about the Bucks, however. They're a blitz team, so you gotta really block them really good. And beat them through the year but however i don't see that with washington i do see tampa winning this game and securing the wild card weekend w it's gonna be a close one however but it's gonna come down to a game winning field goal however 24 to 21 tampa it's not gonna be it's not gonna be a far out as the experts think it is so i think it's gonna be really close but tampa got this game for certain now the rematch of last year's divisional game, Baltimore versus the Titans. Now, both these teams are great. Baltimore's on the highest high winning percentage straight streak. They made it to the to the playoffs. They deserve the playoff spot, no question about it. Derrick Henry, two thousand yards against Baltimore. The ball how now, let's, let me get this clear. Both of these teams has played each other this year. The Titans got over, won in overtime with a Derrick Henry touchdown. The key point for Baltimore to win this game is to stop Derrick Henry, which is going to be difficult for them. So, does Lamar Jackson get his first win in the playoffs? No. I think the Titans are going to tighten up and going to beat, beat Baltimore in their house and... 
it's going to come down to 24-19 tight end. I think I can see that legitimacy. I think it's going to be still a tight one, but tight end's going to pull away near the end. I think tight end's got this. Tannehill, I can trust the Tannehill, trust the Derrick Henry. A.J. Brown, you can trust. Corey Davis, you can trust. So, I, the Titans defense, let me, let's me let be realistic. I, I get scared with them because, remember, the Browns almost blew them out until they started choking a little bit, but they still held out to win that game. But I just don't trust the Titans defense, but expect this to be a close one. I'll tell you that much. The Saints versus the Bears. So, the Bears sneakily get in the seventh See, after the Cardinals choked their season away to not make the playoffs. So, what is the Bears' roar? Go down to New Orleans to play Drew Brees and the Saints. And hopefully, Alvin Kamara can be back by Sunday. Now, who do I got there? If it's Alvin Kamara versus the Bears, gotta go with Saints. No questions about it. I don't think it's going to be a close one. At all. But however, if they do have the struggle without Alvin Kamara and they have to go with, like, say, Murray or somebody else or T.Y. Montgomery, I, I still say the Saints, but it's going to be a little bit closer. Now, with Alvin Kamara, I think this could be it's still tight one in the first half, but I think Saints have got it all through the way 32 14. However, if Alvin Kamara is not playing, however, I think it's going to be a little bit closer, but still with the same uncle 30 to 21 instead. I still, I still think Mitchell Trubisky will still kind of make it a little game there. But in the end, Mitchell Trubisky is kind of a shadow of what they, the, the Bears could have drafted with Patrick Mahomes or Deshaun Watson. So, I still say the Saints in this game. I don't see the Bears winning it. I know the Saints are favored by 10. So, if I'm wrong, you guys can look at this video and can roast the hell out of me about my Dolphins. I understand. I'm on the playoffs. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> but the last pick, the Steelers versus the Browns. I kind of spoiled it a little bit because I was talking to just pointing out Patey and a fan like sports, man. <laughs> Do I see the Browns winning it this time? I don't know. They did struggle against Mason Rudolph, and it was a second. They almost tied the game up. Had... Rudolph not throwing it over Bor Juju. Or was it Nah, I think it was Juju. I'm pretty sure it was Juju or Claypool. One of the two that he overthrew. But I, I just don't know. I think Big Ben comes in big. I think this is, if you're a real team, I know Steelers did struggle near the end of the season. They didn't lose the Bengals. But if you're a real team, you come back here and win this ball game. In your own field, in Heinz Field, against your rival, Cleveland Browns, against Baker Mayfield, you just gotta stop that run. Nick Chubb, Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt. If you can stop that run, you gotta you can, you have to have Baker Mayfield to force to throw the ball, which he doesn't want to throw, force to throw the ball. When you can, when you can feed it to Hunt and Chubb, so I got to see. However, it's still gonna be a close one because I think this is gonna be a tighter game. If not, then it's going to be a blowout. But I'm just going to say it's going to be a tire game just to please my Browns fans that watch my video. <laughs> but I still think it's going to be a heartbreak. I know it's going to be their first time of seeing playoffs. Many of them haven't even seen a playoffs ever unless they found some click in 2002 if they remember they were one years old. If you were born in 2000, 2001, 2000, or even before 2002, Unless you were a Cle Cleveland Browns fan that's been there throughout their life, you know. But I don't see the Browns making it to the next round. I see the Steelers making it to make it, I'm going to say, almost the same outcome. 36 to 34, however. But that 